Hi there, I'm Shauna Lake with Deep In Talent Strategies, if we haven't yet met, and I wanted to provide this quick video about turning a hobby into a career. I did this, I did resume writing and career coaching as a hobby for friends and family and then their friends and family for decades, honestly. And then about um, two years ago, I would do it freelancing a little bit and then uh, people would, would pay me you know, small amounts of money. And after a while, I actually needed to charge more to balance the demand back to high school economics class. And when I did that, I realized this could actually be a full-time position. I had this hobby and I turned it into a career and everybody um, starts a business in a different way. Sometimes uh, people don't want to monetize a hobby because it no longer becomes fun. And I completely get that, uh, which is why in my business, uh, Deep in Talent Strategies, I only spend half of my time with individuals for career coaching because that allows me to still love it and be committed to it. If I did it all the time, I think I would get burned out. And I spend the other half of my time doing human resources consulting for small businesses. And sometimes I think if I did that full time, I might get burned out. So I really like the balance of doing both. And that's something to consider as you think about maybe um, how you could start a part-time business. Sometimes there are side hustles, side gigs, and um, sometimes we want them to stay that way. And sometimes we want them to be full-fledged, um, full-time positions and we end up starting our own companies. Uh, so a few tips if you wanted to turn your hobby into a career and what you do in your free time, create a business plan. It doesn't have to be 30 pages, doesn't have to be all that formal, but identify what it is that you want to grow this into. And, and sometimes that could be a cap. Sometimes you may decide, I don't wanna go above this because then it's no longer gonna be fun. Um, find a market and capitalize on that. One of the best pieces of advice that I received was figuring out who my target audience was. And I used to say, well, anybody who has a job, anybody who needs a resume is my target audience. But I learned pretty quickly of certain people that I was better able to help where it was more rewarding, people that I enjoyed working with the most and where I felt like my skills were most appreciated. Use your existing network to grow a larger one. I did all of my business by friends and family and referrals. And then I did a little bit of online marketing and got some new clients. And now all of my resume writing and individual clients are referrals from past clients and I'm no longer advertising to get new ones. Remember to set aside some of your profits to pay self-employment taxes, super important. Do think about how you want to structure your business. You can be, different states have different, um, different ways you can organize your business. Uh, you might want to get a financial advisor or even a, a personal attorney to help you think about what's best for you. And you can change your mind later, but you there are different tax implications depending on how you decide to structure your business. Research other entrepreneurs. You can certainly connect with me on social media and I'd be happy to share, share my journey with you. And a lot of people have, I love hearing people's stories about how they started their business. Some people fell into it. Some people had a multi-year plan to, to work into it and you kind of hear everything in between. Look into government grants, um, particularly for women and minorities, but for a lot of people, there are grants to move into certain fields, sometimes in, in certain geographic areas, certain rural communities, maybe certain urban communities. So spend a, little, spend a little bit of time looking at grants and also small business loans. A lot of community economic development uh, councils have funding that they provide for small businesses as well. And your Chamber of Commerce is a great resource. Be your own boss and love your work. If you're gonna do this, make sure you like it and that you like being in charge. So the kind of one of the downsides is that uh, if you're turning your hobby into a career, you're not just doing the work that it is that you love, but you're also doing advertising, the marketing, um, the accounts payable, the accounts receivable. One of my least favorite things is having to remind people that they owe me money. So be go into it eyes wide open, knowing that there will be aspects that aren't your greatest skills and the things that you don't love. And if this is gonna become a business, you're gonna have to do all of those things or find people who do. And if you outsource it, then there's a cost to that. And putting those elements into your business plan is really helpful as well.
And now preparing for the change, just um, my last slide here, I just wanted to provide you a few more tips. Um, financially, cut any unnecessary expenses, especially if you're still working a full-time job while you're launching your part-time job. That dual income for a period of time is a great time to save money and test yourself and see how, how little you can actually live on if you had to as you were building your business. Pay off debts as, as if you can, especially while you have both of those sources of income. Consider relocating to cut living expenses and sharing housing. Both of those are a little bit dramatic to pay, depending on um, your current living situation, if you own a home, if you have a family, but, but try to get a little bit creative in terms of ways that you might be able to reduce some of your ongoing expenses and be flexible. Um, this sometimes launching a business uh, involves doing your homework and being smart about it, but taking on a little bit of debt to get a loan so you have some operating capital. And I would really encourage you to have a financial advisor who can help you think about the pros and cons of that and make sure you're getting a good deal and a good interest rate and that it's gonna be a monthly payment you can manage. And then professionally, research your opportunities, um, increase your skills, especially in those areas of business ownership where you may not be an expert yet. I, I know I spent a lot of time understanding marketing um, because that was just not natural for me. Grow your network and build support. I was a little hesitant to tell people that I was doing this when I was doing it part time. I don't know why. I don't know why I was hesitant to do that. But uh, once I started telling people, then business started coming out of the woodwork. So don't be shy to tell people that you're um, that you're starting this business because they can't send you business if they don't know. And social media, it's all about social media um, today. And Facebook groups are huge. If you can get a Facebook group of people who are interested in, in what you do, it's a fantastic way to cultivate an audience and to become some of your top fans. And gain visibility. Maybe you can become a, a guest um, blogger or uh, on a podcast. Start your own blog. Find ways of, of getting your brand out there, your personal brand and also your company brand. So I hope that was helpful. Ways that you can turn a hobby into a professional career. And I would be more than happy to do a Zoom call and um, or a phone call and talk about some of my experiences to help you along the way. So good luck and have fun.